Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 23rd, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. I'm always sharing my sightings, but if you've had a good bird sighting recently, why don't you leave a comment down below letting us know what you saw and where you saw it. It snowed most of the day yesterday and most of the night. The snow had cleared out by the morning, but I still slept in a little bit. Finally got out of the house around 9 a.m. and I decided to swing by the South Marina at Braddock Bay. There were a couple of inches of snow on the ground and a lot of the ice around the edges had frozen. There was a really good number of gulls around and as I was scanning through them I spotted a couple that stood out. So looking to the right of the vegetation first, we see a lot of gulls with these medium gray backs, medium gray, you see some darker immature herring gulls. But one gull that's laying down and sleeping caught my eye, this one here. We see it looks a bit paler than the others. Zooming in a bit so that we can see it here in the center, we see a gull that's just really pale overall and the wingtips are blocked in this photo, but there were occasional times where I could see them and they were white. So we have a white winged gull and this gull was slightly smaller than the surrounding herring gulls. So that rules out Glaucus gull, leaving us with an Iceland gull. And see if you can find the other different gall in this photo. How about if we look to the left of the vegetation? Okay, we see a gall. How about this one? That is much darker on the back than the surrounding herring galls. And it's a tough photo from this distance, but through the scope I could see a little more detail. This is a gall that the back of it was a darker color than the surrounding herring galls. The wingtips look pretty long, and it also seems slightly smaller than the surrounding herring galls. So this is a lesser black-backed gall. There were also a lot of ducks around. It gave us pretty nice looks. With it being frozen around the edges, it kind of forces them out into the open, which helps us pick through them a little bit easier. Here we have a pair of red-breasted mergansers. Here we have a duck that's pretty plain looking, kind of grayish brown overall, maybe a little bit of orange here on the back. This is a male gadwall. Here's a bird that was up in a tree with a whistling song. We see it's red overall with black around the face and a nice red bill. This is a male northern cardinal. I moved down to the other end of the marina and you can see really a lot's frozen down here and there was a nice group of galls on the ice. This gall stood out to me and I think it's just a first winter herring gall, but it's a lot darker than most of them that we are seeing. From the south marina, I had 26 species. Eventually, I made my way over to Braddock Bay Park to start the Hawk Watch. I took this photo from the platform, but that's not where I counted from today. It was another day of counting either from the car or from next to the car. And it was overcast throughout the morning and really most of the day. The winds were out of the north and they were moderately strong. It shifted around to the northwest as the day went on and the winds weakened a little bit. Temperatures were below freezing or right around freezing, so it felt pretty cold. And overall, it was gloomy conditions, not very good for raptor migration. Although towards the end of the day, we did have the sun come out for maybe the last hour or so of the count, but it didn't really help much. Kim and I went out on the boardwalk and we're scanning through the ducks and I heard a songbird call as it flew over and I looked up and saw this bird. So here we see it's kind of a small plain bird with a real thin bill and we see some white outer tail feathers and can't really see much of the facial pattern but it probably has one. That's because this is an American Pippet which was actually my first for the season. Here's another look at the same bird as it was going away. Again, note the white outer tail feathers, and you can see a bit of the streaking on the upper breast. Here's a photo I took just to show some of the variety of waterfowl that were out on the bay. So we can see the mute swan here on the left. In the front, American widgeon. We see red-breasted merganser. In the back here, there's a ring-necked duck. There's some gadwall. So just a really good variety of duck species around today. Here's one out of a group of five tree swallows that flew by and we were a little bit worried about these birds because tree swallows eat insects and with it being below freezing out, um, not exactly the weather that tree swallows want. So a little bit sad to see that some of these birds that arrived in early March with the warm weather and now they're probably struggling a little bit with the temperatures and weather. These Canada geese were feeding in the field and I thought it was funny that when they came up that their bills were covered in snow. This raptor gave us a nice look. We start off looking at the shape. We see the bird's kind of lanky. It's got a relatively long tail, kind of long skinny wings that are held up into a little bit of a V or a dihedral. And we see a white rump patch. 
along with a facial disc. So this is a northern harrier. Now this is one of the brown type northern harriers, so we know it's not an adult male. We know that it's either an adult female or a juvenile. And the way we can tell that is we look at how much streaking it has. And we see a lot of streaking here on the upper breast. And the markings even continue down here under the undertail coverts. And we see markings here on the underwing in the patagial area as well. So this is an adult female northern harrier. And here's another angle of the same bird going away. Again, note that white rump patch and the wings held up into a V. Here we have some large swans with orange bills and black on the face. These are mute swans. Here we have a finch flying over. We see a lot of red here on the breast, but we also see quite a bit of brown streaking. This is a male house finch. Here we have a bird that's orange on the front and black or gray on the back and head with the yellow bill and white eye arcs. This is an American robin. Here's a bird that was flying high as it was migrating to the north. So we see that it has a long neck and head, maybe a long bill shown here, although the photo quality is low, and also long trailing legs. For the wings, we see they're really skinny and pointed. So this is actually a common loon in breeding plumage. Here we have a blackbird flying over, but which kind is it? Well, the main hint comes from here. We can see some red patches in the shoulder area, although that might be hard to see given the overcast skies if you were using binoculars from a distance. But on the down flap, when we see more of that upper wing, it becomes obvious that this is a male red-winged blackbird. Here we have a large dark raptor with a white head and tail. This is an adult bald eagle. And towards the end of the day, the sun started to pop out a little bit, so I took one more trip down to the boardwalk to scan through the birds on the bay. The highlight was getting to see this group of black water birds with white bills. These are American coots, and there were a total of around 60 coots on the bay today. And as it got close to 5 o'clock and time to leave, it was really turning into a really nice day. Taking a look at the eBird checklist for the Hawkwatch today, I had 47 species. American Pippet was new for the season for me, although there had already been one at the Hawkwatch that others had that I missed. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 22 turkey vultures, one northern harrier, one cooper's hawk, and one American kestrel for a total of 25 migrating raptors. That brings the March total to 1,963 and the season total to 2,121. And comparing the March total for this year to previous years, right now we're sitting just under 2,000 total migrants for March this year. Last year we had over 9,000, the year before up over 14,000 migrants. That's when we had that really big turkey vulture day with 10,000 vultures in a single day. Before that, 8,500, 11,700. So the point is, right now we're tracking a little bit low, but we can quickly catch up if we get the right winds and one or two big turkey vulture days, we can get thousands and thousands of turkey vultures in a day. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking mainly sunny with a high just below freezing and northerly winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. I think they're going to be a little bit on the stronger end in the morning and then weaken throughout the day. So it's an unfavorable wind direction, but with that sunshine and with as poor as it's been, maybe some birds will try to push through. Those northerly winds will push the birds away from the lake. So if we're on the platform, we'll be looking towards the parkway. There's a small chance we could move to Frisbee Hill, probably not, but we'll keep that in mind if we need to. But hopefully we'll uh, keep an eye out for a stream of turkey vultures migrating in towards the parkway for tomorrow. For Monday, looking at intervals of clouds and sun with a high much warmer up into the 50s, winds east-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So it's not a great wind direction for us, even though it does have a little bit of a southerly component. Uh, southeast wind is a headwind for us, so any birds trying to migrate across Braddock Bay are going directly into that headwind, so they end up moving very slowly. Um, could get some migration, we'll keep an eye on it. And for Tuesday, looking mostly cloudy, even warmer with a high of 58. And again, southeast winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's a headwind, it's fairly strong, but it is southerly, so maybe we'll see some non raptor migration and. Hopefully some raptor migration as well. We'll keep an eye on that.
And then after Tuesday, Wednesday is looking like it's going to have good southwesterly winds, but a chance of rain. So we'll have to see what happens with that day. Thursday might actually end up being the better day. It's looking like there will be some sunshine and it's westerly winds. So it's not as good of a wind if, as if it were southwest, but it might be good enough, especially with as poor as the migration has been recently. The birds might be really itching to move. So we'll hope for some better days as we get into the middle of the week. And remember that even with the poor weather for raptors, today was still a really good day of birding with all the waterfowl and galls that were hanging around the bay. So it can be good to get out and bird the area, even if we're not getting the big raptor migration numbers. If you like this video, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of these daily updates from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.